scripture says also that if one died for all, it is because all were dead. Now those who are now alive, now you are alive in Christ. We no longer live unto ourselves. We live unto him who died for us. And thus from now on, we know no man after the natural order. Know no man according to the flesh. Know no man according to our own understanding. Even though we have known, uh, as Paul said, known Christ after the flesh. From now on, we don't know him that way because we are new creations in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all these new things of God. You see, many of us have come into the Christian life with our old creation mentality. How we know things. How we dealt with life. How we understood life. We live from our own resources. We live from our own understanding. We live according to the natural man. We live according to the man that is independent and separated from God. But now because we've been made one with Christ through the Holy Ghost, we trust in the Lord with all our hearts. We lean not into our own understanding. We acknowledge him in all our ways and he direct our path. And if we are led of the Spirit, guided by the Spirit, under the control of the Spirit, under the constraints of the Spirit, then love rules our lives. Then as we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That is the end of sin, my friend. That is the end of it in the life of a Christian. Does that mean we are... No. Never make a mistake, never sin. No, 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 no. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse us from all our sins. This is only because God himself is faithful. And if we sin, it is not because God is not able to keep us. We've lost focus on him. So in, if we did lose focus, if we are distracted away from the author and the finisher of our faith, then God has made a way. Jesus himself, who is the propitiation or the substitute for us before God, he continually and ever lives to make intercession for us. And so we look away from ourselves. Father, forgive me for whatever it is. And call that out and say, Lord, I receive forgiveness in the name of Jesus. You see, because Christ himself is our life. And so recognize this. I ask the question, then how do I get to know him? You know him by faith. We know him, first of all, as I said, by becoming a child of God, becoming a believer in Christ. And then as we began to continually look unto him, recognizing that he is our life, and as we are open and receptive to his spirit, then you'll find that God had began to reveal the son in us. And you'll find you won't have to get angry every time things don't go your way. You don't have to get depressed every time things are not working out the way you think they should work. You won't have to feel like you got to be the center of attraction every time things going on. You don't have to preach every time there's an opportunity that seems to be open just because you got a mouth. No, you only commit to those things that God or Christ in you commit you to. And therefore, you are led of the Spirit. And so to live then is Christ. God is conforming us into the image of his son, as Paul declared, I travail in birth to Christ, be formed in you. He's talking to Christian people, those who have confessed with their mouth the Lord Jesus, those who have believed in their heart that God has raised from the dead. He's saying, I travail in birth to Christ, be formed in you. You see, when Christ is formed in us, when God is freely able to have his way in us and, and work in us and through us the way he desires, then he could carry out his will and purpose in us just like he carried out his will and purpose through the son Jesus when he was physically here. And he's doing it through the spirit because we are submitted to the spirit on the inside of us. He's leading us and guiding us. When this is the case, we don't have to tell people to come to church be to church on time. We don't have to tell people you need to pay your tithes. We don't have to tell people you need to stop lying, stop cheating, stop fornicating, stop doing this and don't do that anymore. The reason we have to tell people is because the people don't have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying unto them. And even as children need the parents to guide them from a natural uh, point of view until they are mature, because we refuse to allow Christ to have his way in us, we refuse to abide in him, God cannot lead us the way he desires, that is, from the spirit within us. We need a law on the outside saying, thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not, you better not do this. And therefore, we tell folk, you better come to church, you better pay your tithes, you better do this. And, and the reality of it is, God himself wants to lead you, guide you, direct you. Does that mean I don't need to go to a particular church or have a certain past? No, not, not at all. Because if we're led of the spirit, he may lead you to this particular church or that particular church. But nevertheless, know Jesus. That's my emphasis. 
to know him. And how do I know him? I am open and I am submissive to his leading. I'm saying if I don't know what to pray, I said, Lord, I don't know what to pray, Lord God, but I'm open for you to lead me, direct me, have your way. Whatever it takes for you to do in my life, whatever it takes, Lord God, I am available. I am open. Have your way in me. It really doesn't matter. I just want to know you. And as the Apostle Paul said, my determined purpose is that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately and acquainted with you. That I might know, he says, that the power outflowing from your resurrection that exerts a power over believers. He said that I might continually be conformed unto the image of Christ. That's the whole goal of the Christian life is not that you have a better day, that you miss hell and go to heaven. That is not the goal of the gospel, even though if you know Jesus, you will miss hell and go to heaven. But that's not the goal. The goal is that Christ may be revealed in you. In fact, Romans tells us that the whole creation travails in birth, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And that's not just you walking around and healing folks with your shadows or you casting out devils. You can be ever so immature and God can work in your life through a gift. We are talking about growing up in him, whereas that Christ can have his way in the simplest matters in our life. That we can go the extra mile, that we can turn the other cheek, that we can forgive enemies and love enemies, that we can love one another, that we can lay down our lives for the brethren. It doesn't matter what it is. It is Christ who's leading us and guiding us. And so whether it's a left turn or right turn, it's God's. It's his call. Whether it's to live or to die, it's God's call and not my call because I have laid down my life uh, in order that he could live in me. And see, this is what we don't want to do. We don't. Sometimes we, we, we hold on to those things that God has cut loose. We holding on to uh, things that God has condemned. God says that it is death, but yet we are holding on to the carcass. We are holding on to those things, that old self-life which has been put to death in Christ. For I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, Paul declares, yet not I but Christ liveth in me. And so for Christ's life to be revealed in us, manifested in us, then there must be the death of the old life which is under condemnation. For when Jesus died, he took us in himself into death, crucified, buried, and out of the grave came a new life. And that life was not your old life. That life was not my old life. That life, was, that, life that resurrection, that new life was the life of Jesus. That is why Paul declares now to live is Christ. And so again, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Now the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And so we are growing into maturity. So it's not just about my mansion and about my season, about my blessing, about this and about me, 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 me. That's the babies. That's the babies. Now it's Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. It is now God at work in you effectively, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And so, so that we're growing up in him. And so if, as, if we choose to live this selfish life, then you're waiting to die because you'll never be any good on earth. And you got so many ineffective believers because everything is about me, 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 me. Preachers preaching, the preaching about me is about how I present, how I did this, how I did this. And as we get up in the church performing before the audience, everything is geared towards you instead of Christ. And the folks go home empty, naked and barren, just like they came in and they are defeated, they are beat down, they are broke down, and we wonder what's going on. And my friend, never for one moment think because you got money, you are blessed of the Lord because money is a poor indication of being blessed. You're only blessed when God himself is the blessing in you and he's freely able to move in you and have his way freely in and through your life. A vessel given totally up for the master's use. That is a blessed person, not just because you can speak in tongues, jump over pews and shout and dance and prophesy. That is not a sign that you are a mature believer. It is only when Christ can freely have his way in us can we truly be the believers or the Christians that God created us to be. God expects us to grow up in him, and that is not by man's doing. It is only as we abide in him and he in us, he's able to freely work in us and through us. My friend, this is the Christian life. We've been playing around the, the church so long, we've gotten used to sticks and rocks and branches eating those things and don't even know what the real meat of the word or the real gospel is because we've fed junk all the time. And so if we are to grow, we cannot grow eating foolish stuff. We must have the life of God himself.
He is our life. He is our health, our strength. He is our peace, our joy. He is our all. He is the all in all, making us complete in him, and thus in him we live and move and have our being.